Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the country's biggest stars. And we've got one for you today. A man who's talking about this new phenomena of defriending. 87% of the nation now admit to ghosting those who were once nearest and dearest. It comes down to critical factors like personal hygiene, body odour. 24% have bad teeth, for example. And that means we can now talk to Dr Christian Jessen. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you for saying all that for me. <laughs> We're going to get on and talk about my rash and boils in a bit. But yes, let's I first of all would. talk about this. It's very interesting, isn't it, that um, in the old days, people used to have to pick up a phone. Of course, they pick up their phone now not to talk. Yes, we very rarely actually talk to people, do we? The concept of ringing somebody is, you know, it almost seems a bit intrusive. So a quick text, an email, a tweet or whatever it is, you know, is the way we do things. It doesn't involve any direct... We, we, we are incredibly isolated, I think, now as a society in in, in a way that's bizarre because we've never been more connected and yet, you know, everything is from behind a screen. There's never a person there anymore. In fact, when you do actually get a person on the end of the telephone, it's it's really quite a sort of an odd experience these days, isn't it? We're so not used to it. I think you miss so much in, in written words as well. So when I'm asked to do interviews, um, I often quite, you know, will email you the questions. You, can you email, email us back your answers? And I'll say, no, I'll do it on the phone. And I always, always do interviews on the phone because, you you know, you can miss, understand, you know, in a tweet, well, I got God, don't I know in a tweet to how they can be misconstrued you know something that was meant to be humorous can just be read in a different way whereas I think that's much harder to do when you're speaking to each other so I much prefer it but um no these days it's all it's all texting sexting tweeting whatever it is <laughs> oh I haven't been sexted in weeks it'd be Have lovely you know, oh, I'll send you something don't worry <laughs> chance would be a fine thing I'm amazed by your career and your success it is brilliant how you're still here you're still relevant and you're still credible I suppose it comes down to the fact that you are a proper doctor and that you've done it the hard way. You're not a reality star that's pretending to be. <laughs> no, I am a proper doctor, yeah, that's true. Although some people are do express great surprise when they find that out still. <laughs> um, and I have wondered how I would have got as far as I had without being. But no, I, I mean, I am and I'm still working, I think, which often people don't realise as well. You know, I do two full days of clinic a week and various other things, medical things. You know, so for me, kind of the telly and, and, and the media side of things has always been a bit on the side in my head um, but to everyone else it seems to be the main thing that I do and I, I, I love it I love the variety it gives me and I love the, the privilege it gives me to enable me to speak to all sorts of people like right now about various subjects I think that's so important medicine I don't think I don't think we've been very good communicators in the past you know really um, and I think I like to think that I'm trying to change that I want to talk about the body I'm a deeply unattractive man as you well know you're not you're delicious and people seem to find that attractive do you think we <laughs> We've sort of lost the place as men at the minute because I go in the gym trying to get me man tits down to a size A yeah. and I watch the other guys and they seem to be spending an awful lot of time looking at themselves in the mirror. Men didn't used to do that, did they? No, they didn't used to do that. I think there is far more attention sort of brought onto appearance. In fact, we know there's there's, there's reams of research out there that it's very, very unfair and stigmatising, but, you know, saying that more beautiful people get better jobs, get paid more, you know, get ahead. Um, and that's sort of, um, I think that's very unfair on the one hand, but it just shows how judgmental we are as a society, you know, about our looks. And I think suddenly a whole cohort of young people have cottoned on to this. And you look at these reality TV shows that are all these sort of bronzed, fairly buffed um, creatures, you know, and all they ever do is go on about looks or, or do stuff to themselves to improve their looks. It seems to be the whole premise of these shows that are massively popular, which I, I'm always a bit disappointed to find out. But, you know, because there doesn't seem to be much else going on in them. But that seems to be the way we're heading. It was fascinating. I talked to Ronan Keating last week and he was saying how much pressure he feels under to have the tattoos and go to the gym yeah. and look yeah. a bit similar to you. I wonder how hard you're working at that because I go to the gym every day and nothing's happening. I've lost a bit of weight, but other than that, I haven't got any muscles. There's certainly no definition, let alone a six pack. How do you look like you? Because you are remarkable. <laughs> um, well, you have to remember, actually, uh, this gets serious. In that, this stems from deep seated insecurities, being bullied as a child for being a 
stringy beanpole of a, of a you know tall thin gangly kid who hadn't quite grown into himself and so I was a very very insecure boy sort of riddled with body dysmorphia and other issues who then decided he was going to use the gym to try and you know medicate that and and, and to change his shape so I've been working out for something like 15 years you know it, it, it took a while and it took you know almost a sort of uh, you know a bit of obsessional um, issues within me to, to, to motivate me in that way now there are obviously worse ways that that man can manifest working out wasn't one of the worst ones that was for sure um and, but of course, you know, being on the telly, people are very judgy. No one, no one has ever really commented on my medical knowledge in all the eight or ten years that I've been on the telly. But they sure as hell have commented on my appearance, or my hair, or my shirts, or my whatever it is. You know, it's, that's always seemed to be the focus. And let's face it, at the end of the day, it's, uh, I've got my dad's Danish, so I've got Danish genes. Thanks, Dad. We like those Danish genes. <laughs> and he has marvelous bacon as well, from he what has I hear. Marvelous bacon, my dad. Has. Oh, he does. I guess the reason people are like that is because we can't quantify your genius mentally but we can look at you and judge you physically immediately in a click of the finger i wonder where you're at then psychologically now because i know i'm never going to like myself i'm never going to look in the mirror and think i'm attractive or appealing i'm always amazed when anybody gives me a portion because frankly it's disgusting <laughs> where are you at with your own self insecurities now well you know amazingly i thought telly would kind of probably be my undoing and i went into it very very gingerly and, and nervously and actually I have to say uh, that despite then you know you go on social media or you read comments at the end of some newspaper article and, and you think you'll never ever work again but actually despite that you uh, it's been quite good for me I've been able to relax a little bit more on, on overly criticizing myself you know and some things I look at and I go do you know what the image I have in my head really really actually isn't how I look and you know that was quite good therapy for me really um and it, you, you learn, you, we all have an inner critic, you know, talking away in our ear, telling us that we're not good enough or not trying hard enough, all the rest of it, or a lot of us do. But actually, I think you get, because <laughs> because being in the public eye means you everybody else is also one of your critics, you kind of put up a filter mechanism that helps you, I think, more realistically filter out the nasties, um, listen to the ones that are really relevant and salient and important, but just filter out all the rubbish. And of course, that's what we need to do to our own little internal negative voice as well. That seems to be what's happened. <laughs> Ask me again in another year, we'll see. But what's funny, I sit here and look at your picture and your face with a shirt on. We wouldn't know you had that body unless you took it off. What was the convincing moment or amount of money that got you to take your top off? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I think I did something for charity. I think I did something for Cosmopolitan. <laughs> um, and they wanted to do a nude photo shoot. And I went, really? How nude? Properly nude. Oh, I, I, will my mum see it? Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> what charity is it for? It's for male testicular cancer. Oh, all right then. <laughs> so I did it. And there were two very nice ladies who managed not to look down when I had to take my pants off for the final shot and held a cocktail shake in front of my bits. That's, yes, and um, that did the trick, um, did it? That's the first time. It just about did the trick, yeah. <laughs> mm. You're a medical man. Let's talk about this. I have a thing called, um, oh, what's it called? A micro penis. Very, very small. Embarrassing. Is there any hope? Is there anything I can do? Are there exercises? There are no exercises you can do, unfortunately. Um, mm. Why are you laughing? You're meant to be a doctor. You're meant to take <laughs> well, this serious. I mean, exercises. I, 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 there are things. Do you know why I'm laughing? It's because it's one of those areas where I've never seen seen so many ridiculous contraptions invented available for sale over the internet for people to you know micropenis or no to extend the length of their willies i mean everyone here i think in this room and i'm looking at boys and girls um will have got emails selling them tablets to enlarge their members um and one or two of us may have applied for those tablets and been disappointed that they didn't work but i've seen sort of extraordinary stretchy contraptions that you have to wear for sort of eight hours a day for six months actually interestingly they do work and, and penis enlargement surgery now is is off the scale. It, it is so popular, um, you know, and it's sort of in many countries. It's one of the most commonest sort of um, cosmetic type procedures that, that is done. Uh, but I don't think the results are ever particularly successful. I'm afraid. 
Exactly. If only they could take me back fat and put it downstairs. I mean, it would well, be they perfect. Can, they can do that. There's the fellow who was on Britain's Got Talent, I think, or X Factor. Did you see his video on YouTube? His new song has got 14,000 hits, and him using a penis pump has got 1.4 million. There's a story in there somewhere, isn't there? there? We are yeah. obsessed with this it's, stuff. That's what we prefer, isn't it, really? But um, yeah, well, I didn't see that video. I must, I must just, I made a note of it for later. Oh, come on, Dr. <laughs> Jesson. We know you've been Googling. <laughs> I mean, they do work they just require a degree of dedication that i don't think is probably healthy if you're spending six hours a day focusing on your willy um i would say mm. that probably detracts from life in general and, and and leads to a fairly unhealthy obsession with your penis so i you know <laughs> you see you were offered a cosmopolitan naked shoot take a break offered me 10 grand to keep me clothes on last week so <laughs> you <said> know. take it <laughs> very finally on this thing then about defriending and all that stuff with sure and i should say you can go to their website if you want to find out more suredeodorant.co.uk UK have got all the details there. Um, do you think it helps that we are so happy now to sort of impersonally sack people from our lives? Is that a good thing? Because it makes it easier, but it's very inhuman, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it's horrible. I, and I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm sort of wrote a series of children's books recently that, that look into this very issue of how brutal I think life is. Um, and people that go, oh, come on, there's nothing worse than being told to your face, you can't be in our gang, you know, when you're a kid. But actually, I think when you've discovered the whole class has unfriended you off Facebook, it's a far worse. It is literally the closing of a door in your face and no reason at all given, you know. And I think those aren't answered questions can, can drive a man mad. And that's, you know, it's, it's a much nastier, colder, you know, clinical way of doing things, isn't it? That I think can be uh, very, very distressing, especially for younger people who are very sensitive to these sorts of things. And the problem is you never find out why, and it's the not knowing why that is often so painful for people. So in review then, you can go to shawdeodorant.co.uk for more details about this. I have a very tiny penis and you have an amazing body. That's what we've learnt in the last 15 minutes. And Dr. Christian Jessen is our guest today. Very finally about your career where you go forward. You've done some these wonderful shows that people seem to love and they be, of course be, go viral and all that stuff we talk about defriending online people love to watch your stuff will you be doing more of them is is this the plan for the future yeah definitely i mean I, I have a number of documentaries i really i made some documentaries last year which i absolutely loved doing they're a little bit meaty a little bit more in depth into various things um and I, mm. I want to do more like that so looking at sort of slightly alternative or strange health behaviors and issues and really looking into the world of those more so so watch this space really i I hope, I hope you enjoy those too. Hey, listen, great to talk to you. I love getting you on. You're such fun. And uh, thank you for playing along. You can find out more at shawdeodorant.co.uk. And uh, Dr. Christian, great to talk to you. I'll talk to you soon.